on. Sorry guys, this video is getting super long, but if you're real and you're and you're sticking with me, you're listening to this information, this is going to improve your game so much faster. Number five, train the way you want to play. <clears throat> so this is about realistic training. A lot of players, they say they want to play well in games, but if you look at the way that they train, it's not helping them at all. It's wasting time, it's wasting energy. It's not It's not improving you. You're getting better at juggling and hitting dead balls. But guess what, you didn't take a free kick all game and nobody cares if you can juggle to a thousand if you can't receive and pass a ball. Train realistically, train the way that you wanna play. So coming back, you can improve every single area of your game that you want to. I said this in the beginning, you have to believe that. It is possible and number two, it's all on you. So it's possible to improve every area of your game and it's all up to you to improve every area, every area of your game. Yes, coaches, trainers will come along, they'll help you, teammates will come along and they'll help you and that's fantastic and use them to your advantage. But at the end of the day, you need to be your own best trainer. You need to be your own best motivator. I'm here to help you as well, but I can't help you unless you help yourself and you're willing to put in the work yourself. Genetics are not an excuse. You're a certain size, size doesn't matter. Lino Messi, we're saying he's the best player in the world. He's like 5'2", he's a midget. I'm not even allowed to say that anymore. He's a short person. <laughs> he's a short person, size doesn't matter. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. It's the size of the heart, okay? Even if you're small, you play big. If you're not the fastest, you have other uh, genetics that hold you back, like let's talk about speed. Okay, I'm not the fastest player, but I need to be the fastest version of myself. And I have my other attributes. I still need to be quick and I need to be sharp. Maybe I'm not the fastest player on the pitch. I can't, I can't change that, but I can improve. I can work with what I have. Okay, so genetics are not an excuse. Stop complaining about the problem and find the solution. So stop complaining. Well, first of all, if you're complaining, at least you're identifying it. A lot of people won't even complain about their weaknesses. But stop complaining about it, start doing something about it. Stop complaining about the problem, find the solution. So you're not good at long passing. Okay, well have you actually practiced that every single day for the last week? Have you pinged 100 long balls with your right and left foot? No, then you have no right to complain. Go and put in the work, identify your weaknesses, you can improve everything. Weaknesses need to be fixed, don't hide from weaknesses. Now if I'm a striker, I don't need to spend all single day working on defending. But I need to be able to nick a ball. I need to be able to tackle a guy if he's around me. I need to work on it a little bit. Yes, I need to focus more on finishing and and uh, shooting from around the box or whatever you want to, whatever your skills you want to identify for a striker. But I still need to identify some weaknesses and improve them because being a well-rounded player, that's good for every single position. So <clears throat> I want you to focus on total player development. Most players, what do they focus on? Just technique. Just improving technique. Yes, you need to be improve technique. But if you look at my pyramid of player development, it's totally backwards from what most players do. They go technique, fitness, tactics, mentality. Where do I start? I start with the mind. Because if this mind is strong, then everything else falls into place. It's harder, it's easier for me to improve my technique if, my, if I understand how to think and I understand my thought process. So start with mentality, stronger mentality. <clears throat> Analyze your thoughts. Every thought that comes into your head, like. Ask yourself, is this serving me or is this holding me back? Do I need to change that thought? Is this the voice of doubt or the voice of confidence? Excuse me. Analyze your thoughts and talk yourself forward. You gotta be able to talk yourself forward through the hard times. You had a bad game, how do you talk yourself out of this? You had a bad <clears throat> tryout, you had a few bad touches, you missed a chance, you got beat in a one-on-one -on -one situation, everyone's making fun of you, the coach has you on the bench. You can sit there and complain about it, but you, if you're strong mentally, you gotta talk yourself out of that. Become a smarter player every single day. So you gotta learn the game. You can't just show up and play and think that you know what you're doing. You gotta learn the game. You gotta learn the positions. You gotta learn the formations. You gotta learn decision making. You gotta learn off the ball movement. The average player has the ball for like two minutes a game. Especially at the higher level, you have it even less and less because you play faster and faster. I might have more touches, but I move the ball even quicker. So it's on my foot for a half second. Okay, you think you have the ball for like 10 minutes a match, you don't. You have the ball for like two minutes a match. What are you doing the other 88 minutes of the game? It's about off the ball movement. So what's your positioning? Where are you going? Where do you need to be? Watch the game, watch professional players who play your position, learn from them, ask the coach for advice, watch tactical videos. You have to become smart, you have to improve your decision making, you can't make the same mistakes. And, <clears throat> focus on the skill of awareness. So this is when I'm, it's not ball watching, most simply. When I'm watching um, 
if we're playing the game, we're in a practice and I'm just watching the ball, I have no idea what's going on around me over here. I don't know where my teammates are. I don't know where the guy I'm supposed to be marking is. I don't know where the space is. I don't know where the danger is. So I need you to practice the skill of awareness. I know where the ball is, but I'm constantly scanning. When the ball's coming to me, I'm knowing where the space is before I receive it. So shoulder checking, awareness, it's constantly scanning the field. Focus on that skill, and that's something you can practice right away. You can add that to your game right away. Become more athletic. Don't just focus on the technique. It's not just what about you, what you do about with your feet. You have to be fitter. You have to be faster. You have to be stronger. You have to be more mobile so you can play longer. So constantly thinking about physicality, improving physicality as well. And then we come to technique, the fun stuff. It's easy to get on the ball and, and practice your shooting. That's so much fun. Okay, so focus on the other stuff first and then technique comes into place. And these, <clears throat> I don't want you to think I'm ne neglecting technique at all because you have to be able to execute. Technique is the ability to do what you see in your mind with your feet. So improve your shooting, improve every area of your, of your technique. You're shooting, you're passing, you're dribbling, you're control. You're tackling, tackling is a skill. Learn to tackle, become a good tackler. It makes the game so much more fun when you play both sides of the game, defensively and offensively. Don't just play one side. You need two feet. You need two feet. You're not Lino Messi. You don't have the best left foot in the world. You need two feet. So start from the beginning, practicing, developing two feet, and pay attention to the details. You might think it's enough to pass the ball to your teammate who's right there. I'm telling you, it's not. You have to pass it to his right foot over his left foot. You have to pass it five inches in front of him rather than five inches behind him. Okay, so it's attention to the details. So when I have my first touch, where does the touch go? It doesn't just stop at my feet. It goes five, uh, it goes uh, two yards to the right or it goes behind me. Okay, it's so precise. When I make that shot, I need to curl it outside the post so it just comes back in at the last time. I don't just hit it there down the middle with good power. Okay, it has to be accurate. It's attention to the details. And yes, it's good that I'm improving, but I'm always asking myself, how can I get better? How can I make that better? What's the next level? Okay, you're always seeking more and you're always looking for more. Let's talk about hard work versus smart work. What should you be doing? Well, the answer is you need to be doing both. But I think that you have to start with smart work because if you're not focusing on things that actually make you better in a game, like I said, train the way that you want to play. Most players, what do they do when they go to the field by themselves? They juggle a ball, they do some freestyle tricks, and then they hit dead balls for 20 minutes, and then they go home. And they think that's gonna make them play better on game day. It's not. You need to train realistically. What does your position require you to do? Are you a winger? Okay, you have to be able to dribble at pace, sprinting with the ball down the line, and you need to be able to deliver an accurate cross when you're tired, when you've already beaten two guys when the pressure is on you at the last moment, or you need to get past someone, get your head up and actually bend the ball into that corner. So are you practicing realistic game scenarios? So I need you to analyze your position specifically. What do you need to get better at? What are you struggling with in the game right now? And how can I put this, what type of drill can I use to replicate that game situation and practice that over and over again? So when you get in the game, oh, I've actually already done this a hundred times. This is easy to me now. Rather than, oh yeah, I got some good freestyle tricks. That's probably gonna improve my, my ability to score goals and win games. You're wasting your time. It's, you can do those things. I'm not saying you can't do those things, but you gotta prioritize what's really important, what's actually gonna make you play better on game day. So train specifically to perform well in matches. <clears throat> Quality over quantity. It's okay, yes, you need to play with intense, you need to train with intensity, you need to train at match speed, you need to play fast, try, try to play under pressure, try to train with speed, do the drills with speed, but at one point, I need to really slow it down and I need to make sure that I'm getting the technique right, so you really gotta focus on the quality. I can kick the ball up against a wall 100 times and just kick it there, or I can kick the ball against the wall 20 times and I can really focus on what I'm doing, think about what I'm doing, analyze every single repetition. Oh, I should have hit it here when I hit it there. I should have done this with my foot when I did that with my foot. I should have bent my way, leg that way. I should have followed through with my body. The quality of the repetitions is so much more important than the quantity. Now this comes back to smart work and hard work. You need to do both. So do smart, smart training, realistic training, focus on the quality of the technique, but once you got it, now we add up the repetitions and we work harder than anyone else and we put more time in than anyone else. But for me, I am, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, we'll come back to that, um, but I just wanna talk about like training mentality. For me, I'm about getting more out of a session in less time than other players do. So I'm gonna go to the field, I'm gonna be there for less time, maybe 45 minutes, for an hour, 
You're gonna be there for two hours. I'm not saying you, I'm just talking hypothetically. Now that you got this information, you're doing the same thing that I am. But I'm gonna be there for 45 minutes and I'm gonna get more out of it because my training is more specific, it's smarter, it's um, the quality is higher, I have more focus, I'm more present in the moment. I'm asking myself, how can I get more out of this? And you're just going there, or the other players just going there, and they, they think just because they spent two hours on the field, that made them better. When realistically, you were wasting your time. You could, you could have just stayed at home, would be at the same level right now. Okay, so focus on getting more out of the session in less time. But what I wrote here is stimulate, don't annihilate. So on that same topic of training, I wanna be able to come back and train tomorrow and train the next day and train the next day and train the next day. So yes, I need to work hard, but that doesn't mean I'm destroying myself every single day. I'm not doing a beep test every single day. I'm not playing for three hours to the point where I can't even move my legs every single day. I need to listen to my body and I need to train in a way that stimulates me enough to improve, but doesn't annihilate me, doesn't exhaust me, doesn't destroy me and get me injured and fatigue me. Okay, so yes, you wanna work hard, but you wanna work smart so you can come back and work smart and hard the next day and the next day and the next day. And consistency, that's when you stack stuff up and that's when you get better. You need to understand it takes time to improve, but the more consistent I can be and the more I can apply these smart principles, the faster I'll improve. So it takes time to get better. But when you're younger, you can get, or when you're just starting out, you're a beginner, you can get better a lot faster. The better you get, the harder it is to get better but you can always get better and you're never good enough. Let's keep improving. And then the final thing I wrote here was, I just want you to prioritize um, your recovery. So treat recovery as part of your training. Become better at recovery, especially as you get older. When you're young, you play like three games, get, get, uh, three games a day, your body doesn't even feel sore, you don't even stretch, you don't eat properly. That catches up to you real quick. Learn how to recover when you're younger because you're really gonna need it when you're older, especially when you play if you wanna play long, and you wanna play at a higher level. So treat your recovery like any other skill that you're working to improve right now. Prioritize your warm up, prioritize your cool down, hydration, nutrition, and I also wrote tension release. So that's like recovery practices, whether it's foam rolling, some additional stretching, cold, hot um, contrast, a hot tub, a cold bath, cold shower, um, vibration techniques, massage tools, things like that. Focus on those things are gonna help you recover faster. And it helps you play longer, you get injured way less, you have way more fun. Let's keep going. Sorry, I wrote, um, so if you wanna pause right now, I just want you to create a brief training plan for the next seven days. Cause it's one thing for me to say, oh yeah, I'm gonna train every day. It's totally different. I just gotta plug this computer in so it doesn't die. Um, <clears throat> It's one thing for me in my head to say, yeah, I'm gonna train every day this week. It's different for me to write it on a piece of paper or write it on a calendar and then actually cross it off when I did it. Make yourself more accountable to yourself. Have better discipline, better organization. So create a brief plan. What are you gonna do for the next seven days? Are you gonna do double? Are you gonna do a gym session? Are you gonna do a workout session? Keep them brief. Remember, don't do three hours in the gym and three hours of the field. Do one hour in the gym, one hour at the field, something like that. Um, or you're just gonna, if you're just getting started, maybe you're just doing a, a morning routine of 30 minutes every morning. What are you gonna do? Create your own training plan. We're all in different situations, but we all need to improve and we need to be organized. So write down your.